My name is Ms. Lerner and I teach chemistry and I've been teaching for three years. I had an incredible experience in high school having some of the most amazing science teachers who made learning fun, they made learning exciting, they made it relevant to my life and they made me want to go into it at the college level and just in life in general and teaching made me realize that if I could have the same impact on students that my own teachers had on me, then it could make a world of difference on future generations. Hello, my name is Dakota Lawson. I teach chemistry and physics at Great Neck North High School. I think my favorite part about science is being given problems that I've never seen before and having to challenge myself to try and figure out an answer to them. It's the experience of not knowing what I'm doing and trying to figure out a way that makes sense that really drives me to want to keep doing it. And I think that a general public that understands science is able to better vote on the laws and regulations that are put out there and better at governing the um, population as a whole in terms of what is right for the people that are part of the society and what is right for the future of our planet. Please do not try any of the experiments you are about to see at home. This is one of my favorite demos to do. The students really enjoy it because it's got a great wow factor. It involves taking the gas that's available in the chemistry lab, which is methane gas, and filling soap bubbles with it. The soap bubbles actually make a pretty high stack, which makes for a bigger reaction. And the reaction that we'll actually be igniting is a combustion reaction. When the methane is ignited in this reaction, it actually produces a pretty big flame. And especially to those students that are sitting closer, they can actually feel the heat, which is pretty extraordinary. This is a demo that I usually do during the topic called gas laws, where we talk about the relationship between pressure, temperature, and volume of a gas. Now in this demo, the can is heated up and the particles inside the can spread out. And as soon as I turn the can upside down into the cool ice water, all of the particles come together very quickly because of the relationship between volume and temperature. Now when they come together really quickly, they actually bring in the sides of the can with them. And you end up seeing a can crushing effect. For this demonstration, going to be an ignition source that is stationary. To do that I'm going to attempt to use this Bunsen burner as you will see in some of the other demos. There are a lot of different fuel sources. Most of them are able to be contained fairly easily. In this case what you're noticing burning as it passes through is flour. To get the flour to a state that it can be burned I must aerate it. One of the ways that I do that is kind of softening it up or loosening up with my hands and then blowing out of my hands and as much of a puff as I can get. That way it gets very fine in the air above and then shows how easily it can be ignited. Let's see that in slow motion. This reaction involves the burning of magnesium and before I do this demo I always tell the students to not look directly at the magnesium because if they do it's actually such a powerful light and bright light that it can hurt their eyes. So I always tell them to turn their head and look from the corner of their eye. When burning magnesium you actually convert a great amount of chemical energy into light energy and you see that in a very bright light and the students don't expect to see such a bright light so they're, they're quite surprised when they see such a bright light from the burning of something that's quite small. Continuing with the theme of flammability, um, here we have a balloon. It is filled with a flammable gas, commonly referred to as hydrogen. In this case, we're going to mix a fuel with oxygen and we will use a candle flame as the ignition source. Ooh, can we see that again? In this demonstration, I'm first showing how a Tesla coil provides spark energy or electrical energy. The main reason I wanted to be able to demonstrate the use of it is to be able to use it as an igniter. Inside of it is a mixture of methanol, alcohol, and air. Whoa! Can we see that again? 
So the cup is filled to the brim, overflowing almost, and I'm just gonna press the index card down, and then as soon as I turn it over, the water comes out. And it's because the air pressure outside of this cup is greater than the pressure inside. So it's holding the water in there pretty effortlessly. But as soon as you let the air in, that's it. In this demonstration, we're going to be both looking at another fuel ignited, um, and we're going to be demonstrating the one of the lab safety uh, apparatuses we have available for us here at the school. On these demonstration labs or on the lab benches where we have students do work with flammable things, we need to make sure that the environment is safe in case there's an accident. I've purposely done something unsafe, which is poured fuel out onto the table and then lit it on fire to demonstrate what would happen if you had some fuel contained in something and it broke or somehow was spilled onto there and then caught on fire. It's been great being able to share some of the interesting things that we do in the science classes here. While this looks cool, the basis is all in science. The concepts are all the same as those that scientists are using every day to make the toothpaste that's going in your mouth, or the body wash that's going on your body, or the food that's going into your stomach. Many times magicians are just really good scientists. I think that if you can learn science, the way that you have to think to learn science, you can learn anything. There's so much analytical thinking, there's so much creative thinking, but beyond that, I think that if you can understand chemistry, if you can understand physics, if you can understand biology, then you have the ability to understand everything in the world around you, which is an incredible thing, because you're walking around, instead of seeing buildings, instead of seeing cars, instead of seeing you know, desks and people and flies and whatever else you see when you're walking around, you actually know what's behind all of that. You can learn anything if you can learn science.